tonight. China says the iPhone is a threat to their national security. Amazon wasn't kidding. They really want to st start testing drones for package delivery. And should the FTC investigate Facebook's mood study? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 127 for Friday, July 11th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. I'm Mike Elgin. Let's get right to the tech feed. China's state-owned CCTV called the Apple iPhone a threat to national security. The iPhone's frequent locations feature could be used to collect data about the movements of the Chinese public and thereby constitute a leak of state secrets, at least according to an academic interviewed by the program named Ma Ding, who's the, currently the head of the Online Security Institute at People's Public Security University of China. Last month, a blog post in the People's Daily newspaper, also owned by the Chinese government, accused Apple, Microsoft, Google, and Facebook of conspiring with the U.S. government to spy on China. Analysts are assuming the report is part of a wider effort to criticize American technology companies after U.S. accusations of Chinese military hacking and also as a response to the Edward Snowden revelations on NSA spying. Testing drones for commercial use is banned in the United States, but today Amazon asked permission to test the use of package delivery drones. In a letter to the Federal Aviation Administration, Amazon said their so-called Amazon Prime Air service would deliver packages of five pounds or less in 30 minutes or less. The drones could travel more than 50 miles an hour. The test would be limited to a confined area over isolated Amazon private property and nowhere near airports, homes, or military installations. The Wall Street Journal reported that Amazon currently has at least six job openings for people to work on Prime Air. Amazon said in a letter that, quote, one day, seeing Amazon Prime Air will be as normal as seeing mail trucks on the road today, unquote. The FCC has decided to spend $2 billion over the next two years to improve the quality of Wi-Fi networks at schools and libraries. In a 3-2 vote along party lines, the Democrats on the committee voted yes and the Republicans voted no. The commission approved the plan, which will phase out funding for voice service, web service, and, wait for it, paging services, and use that money to improve Wi-Fi. The FCC chairman, Tom Wheeler, wanted to spend $5 billion on the project, but Republican commissioners and some Republicans in Congress pushed back on spending that much money. After two months of rumors, Yahoo finally bought the video broadcasting startup RayV. The company specializes in delivering very high-quality video streams to very large numbers of people. RayV software includes content management, digital rights management, and a content distribution network. The acquisition could boost Yahoo's ability to compete with YouTube. The terms of the deal... Were not disclosed. Coming up, the Pentagon invents a smart bullet that can change direction. And next, I'll talk with Reed Albergati from the Wall Street Journal about fallout from the Facebook mood study. But today, I want to share with you a free and secure tool called Personal Capital that solves two barriers to growing your wealth. The first barrier is that it's hard to keep track of stocks, 401ks, bank accounts, and all that, all on different sites with different usernames and passwords. The second is that you pay someone to manage it, and you're probably paying too much. Personal Capital brings all your accounts and assets on one single screen on your computer, phone, or tablet with real-time and intuitive graphs. This week, Personal Capital announced the integration of its award-winning app with Android Wear, Google's smartwatch platform. The update is available for download from the Google Play Store. The Watch app seamlessly integrates with Personal Capital on other Android devices and provides users with relevant and timely updates on their finances wherever and whenever they need it. It shows how much you're overpaying in fees and how to reduce those fees. You also get tailored advice on optimizing your investments. So why wait? Signing up takes just a minute and it'll pay big dividends. Personal Capital gives you total clarity and transparency to make better investment decisions right away. To set up your free account, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Personal Capital is free and it's the smart way to grow your money. But you must go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. That's personalcapital.com slash TN2. Well, joining us today is Reed Albergati, the tech reporter with the Wall Street Journal. Hey, how's it going, Reed? Good. How are you? Great. Now, you wrote articles for the Wall Street Journal last week on Facebook's so-called mood study, where they tweaked a small number of users' news feeds to see if mood was contagious. Well, 
Now, Democratic Senator Mark Warner of Virginia is asking the FTC to investigate whether those experiments violated Facebook's own terms of service. Uh, do you think this investigation is actually a good idea? And what do you think they'll ultimately conclude? Look, I think that, you know, it, I wouldn't even call it an investigation. I think it's it's pretty common for, you know, politicians to to want to look into things like this. And, you know, I think that it definitely warrants it. There, there's this gray area right now in not so much the law, but but in, ter in ethics, in um, academic ethics, where, you know, publicly funded academic institutions are required to, you know, follow certain guidelines to do studies like this. But companies like Facebook aren't required to follow those guidelines. Um, so what happens when an academic institution like Cornell, in this case, uses data from Facebook? That question just hasn't been answered, but it's increasingly a common practice in academia. So I think it's, I think it's important to take a look at this. Um, I don't think it actually does violate violate Facebook's terms of service. Um, it says, you know, right in there that that you know they can essentially use your data any way they please, including, um, you know, with by doing research. Um, although the word research was not in the terms of service um, in 2012 when the study was conducted, um, it's since been added. And Facebook says it doesn't really matter because the old terms of service kind of covers this this area. And, of course, the response to this study has ranged from hysteria to who cares, it doesn't really matter. Uh, even one commentator saying that, you know, they have an obligation to do that kind of research because social networks are such a great place to find things like this out and uh, a lot more research needs to be done. But uh, a response, one response to Facebook's mood study is a Dutch nonprofit called Just BV, which called on Facebook users to stop using the service for 99 days to see if they're happier without it. They wanted to do a study of their own. Can you tell us about this campaign a little bit and whether you think it'll have any impact? Well, it's, a, it's for, I mean, this, this Dutch company is actually an advertising agency. Um, it's, not a, it's not a nonprofit. I don't think they're doing this for altruistic reasons. I think it's a very clever publicity stunt, you know, asking people to replace their profile photo on Facebook with this logo um, that they've created for this this movement to get off Facebook for 99 days. Um, I don't know. I mean, we'll see if if um, you know anyone actually does this. I thought what was funny is in a pre they sent out a press release, and in the press release they actually said, um, you know, we decided on 99 days because we thought anything longer than 99 days would just be you know too much for people. Well, I think 99 hours is too much for a lot of people. I mean, they have. 860% of their users basically use Facebook every single day. So it's going to be really hard for people to completely get off the service. Um, but we'll see. I mean, we'll, we'll see if the publicity stunt actually turns into a, a real solid movement. Yeah, the test may be to see if this kind of publicity stunt actually gets you customers or attention. Uh, I suggest that it'll, it'll do a better job of that than it will to get people off Facebook. While well, shifting gears a little bit, Facebook yesterday started letting developers sell virtual game goods directly from ads placed on the desktop version of Facebook. Normally, these virtual items are purchased from within games. Uh, do you think this is double dipping on Facebook's part, as uh, some have accused them? I mean, first they get paid for the ad, and then they get paid 30% of the purchase price for that ad. Uh, what do you think about this, uh, this, new, uh, this new option? Well, you know, I think... Yeah, you could call it double dipping, but I think this is the this is the trend over time with Facebook. I mean, people uh, companies are actually built around this platform, um, and then over time, as you know, they become sort of addicted to it or or build their whole business around Facebook. Then Facebook really has a lot of control and a lot of business negotiating leverage over these companies and how they want to charge them for for their services. So, you know, I think that if you the lesson here, I think, and and I think companies have actually learned this in the decade that Facebook's existed, is that you know if you really depend on Facebook for your for your revenue for your business, um, you know it, it's a risky thing because the terms that you have now, you know, could and and probably likely will change in the future. We we saw it with other things like you know the original kind of Zynga uh, type products on Facebook. We saw it with organic reach, um, where you have 
companies that um, you know put a lot of money into building up these huge Facebook audiences with the the notion that they could reach all these fans. Well, now they can't, and they have to pay to reach those fans. So things are always the, the platform will always change, will always evolve, and generally. Um, as long as people are dependent on Facebook, it'll change in Facebook's favor. Absolutely. And I think there's a reasonable expectation that this currently desktop only feature will go to mobile and it'll go from uh, games that are not only on Facebook's own site, but also on iOS and Android games. So this is, uh, as you said, I think this is the future of this kind of advertising. Reed Albergati, I want to thank you for coming on Tech News tonight. Where can people follow you on social media? Well, check me out on Twitter. It's at Reed Albergati, uh, just basically my name. Um, and you can check us out. I, I'm on Facebook as well. Uh, follow me on Facebook. And, um, you know, at, at WSJ Digits and WSJD, we're, um, we're all over the place. All right. Well, thank you very much. And you can also find uh, Reed occasionally joining us on Tech News Today, our other news show. Thanks again, Reed Albergati. Thanks for having me. Well, the Pentagon's research and development group called DARPA has successfully tested a smart bullet that can change direction in mid-flight to hit its target. The bullet technology is part of DARPA's Extreme Accuracy Task Ordinance, or Exacto. The smart bullet should not be confused with a smart rifle, such as the Linux-based tracking point rifle, which calculates all the particulars needed to launch a dumb bullet in the right direction. Exacto 50 caliber smart bullets can adjust their direction mid-flight to compensate for gusts of wind or even movement by the target. Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Mike Elgin. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.